Hi, this is Jamin Taylor with J Hunter Photography, and today I'm going to walk you through my standard editing process for uh, processing my birds. And uh, I'm going to start off with Lightroom, and then we're going to bring that photo. Uh, once I'm done with Lightroom, bring it into Photoshop, do my final edits, and call it good. So I just wanted to take a minute to go through my processes with you all and uh, so you can reference them. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up Lightroom and I've got my photo selected that I wanted to edit and uh, this is an orange crowned warbler that I photographed recently uh, before they decided to head south and uh, had a chance to photograph them one last time for the season. So uh, first thing I do when I when I uh, go into editing my bird photos is decide how I want to crop for composition. Now you can see that I shot the bird in my center pin. So my, my focusing point was right here in the middle. I tried to focus on his eye. And uh, so that left the bird right smack in the middle. And I really typically don't like to have my bird smack in the middle. Uh, that's just how this one turned out. So what I'm going to do is, is crop this and uh, I really want there to be not as much room over here and over here I want the bird to be looking into. Now I also have these kind of, in my opinion, distracting branches. This is cow parsnip that the, the bird was perched on. And then I've got this piece of grass here also that is a bit of a distraction. So I'm going to remove those two uh, just so we have a really clear view of this bird and uh, without any uh, distraction. So the first thing I want to do is go to my crop tool. And I'm going to click on my crop tool and that's going to give me uh, my built-in thirds. You can see that I have uh, this screen divided up into thirds. Here's the three horizontal and three verticals which provide four focal points. These areas right here are my focal points. And that's usually where I want to try to get the bird's eye closest to, or at least uh, get the bird on one of those focus points. So I'm going to start off with a crop. And the bird is kind of looking down. You can see his, that he's kind of pointed downward. So I'm going to bring it in from the top here. Now. One secret about the crop tool is if I hold down my shift and start my crop, it, it constrains the proportions, meaning that uh, it's not going to change you know, and get all, get all wonky on me. It's going to keep the uh, dimensions that are in my original photo. Now, if I release shift, then I can go crazy with it and do whatever I want. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hold down the shift, and I'm gonna go to my crop. So another thing I want to I don't want to get that tail too close to the edge. I need to give the bird some breathing room. So probably something like that is good. You can see that top focal point is where I want my bird, it's where I want the focus to be. I've given the tail a little bit of room so it's not just right cropped against the edge there. And overall it looks good. I think the bird has room to look into the frame. He's not looking out of the frame. Uh, and as a reminder, if you've been to uh, one of my workshops, uh, I'm always uh, telling people not to not to crop, you wouldn't want to crop like this because uh, the bird is looking out of the frame at this point and uh, that's going to direct the viewer's eyes out of your photo and that's not what you want. So we're going to go ahead and do this crop and this actually takes care of this branch here which means that I won't have to edit that out. So I've got a nice close-in view of this bird. I'm going to hit the crop tool again to complete my crop and there I have it. I have a nice looking close-in view of this bird. It's nicely perched. And so now what I want to do is I want to get rid of 
this branch. It, it's distracting to my eye and I want to bring the focus to the bird. So I'm going to go to the spot removal tool. And here you can see that it's already, uh, it's already sized at 77 with a 45 uh, feather. And that's for spot removal. And you can see I had a, a smudge on my lens, or excuse me, a, a speck of dust on my sensor uh, before I cleaned it. And I've got a couple of them. I've got one right here, and I've got one right there. So I'm going to take care of those real quick first. And all I've got to do is click on them. It's going to sample from somewhere else that's similar. And I'm good to go. And then I'll turn it off for a second so I can identify the other one right there. So I just took care of those two spots. Just they kind of bug me. I see another one right here. Let me get rid of that one too. So I just want to remove any distractions and anything that may take away from just the smoothness of that background. So now I've got to come in here and deal with this. And I'm going to do it in two ways. Uh, I'm going to first go to Photoshop. I'm going to use this, or excuse me, Lightroom. I'm going to use this spot removal tool to get rid of the, the majority of it, and I'm going to finish it off just to, just to smooth it out in Photoshop once we're done. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to increase the size here because I want to really want to grab all of this. And I'm just going to paint a big old swatch down there. And then this is going to sample it. And this is way too far over. So I've got a resample. It'll it'll uh, it'll kind of pick for you where it's sampling from, and then you can grab that and readjust it. So you can see I've sampled it from just a couple a couple uh, pixels over. So here you can see that uh, it's done a good job of. of removing the tree, but I still have some of this area going on here where you can tell us that something happened. So I'm going to take care of that in Photoshop. Right now I'm just going to uh, expose my bird correctly. You can see it's really bright and uh, I want to pop out some of the color and a little bit of the detail in this first run in Lightroom and then we're going to finish off in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is uh, it was a really bright day and so some of those whites are just a little too much for me. Um, they kind of wash out some of the color. So I'm going to take my slider here. And if you ever have a bird where you've got hot spots or if you've got a white bird and it was a bright day, you can recover some of those details. And even in a background, if you have clouds or something and they're really bright, you can bring down the whites and it'll recover some of those details really nicely and uh, give you a, a better photo. So. I'm going to take this down, just going to bring down some of those highlights. And probably minus 75. And I'm going to increase, I use my clarity. And I'm going to bump up that clarity a little bit. Just so I want to recover some of the details in there. I'm going to go to my Vibrance tool. I usually don't do a lot with saturation. I usually stick to Vibrance when I'm adding color back in, because it usually does enough. Saturation, in my opinion, starts looking too fake, and I want my photos to look as natural as possible. Uh, even though I'm doing some, some editing to them, I still want them to be realistic especially in the color and whatnot. So um, I'm just going to do some slight adjustments to clarity. I brought my white down. I might bring that down just a little bit more. And maybe my contrast bring that up just a little bit. Sometimes it's nice just to slide it around just to, just to kind of see what it looks like. And I think I... I think I like this about, about 11 or so. And I really think that looks pretty decent. I've got some good color on the bird here. This is still a little, a little washed out color, but I, you know, this is also a fall bird. And uh, a lot of the color from its breeding plumage is, 
is uh, not there. So I think this looks actually pretty good and I think it's ready for export. Now I export these as Photoshop documents and uh, I dump them all into a folder and I've got a huge backlog of photos I still need to edit. I usually end up editing the best ones and posting them either to Flickr or Facebook or whatever and then uh, kind of go through and later on through the winter you know, as, as, uh, as the birds are scarce I'll pull up something from summer and post those but usually the best ones I post right away. So I'm going to go up here and go to File, and go to Export, and it's going to say, yes, I want to put this in Untitled Export, and I'm going to call this Orange Crown Warbler, OCW, Orange Crown Warbler. It may have Orange Crown Warbler in there, so I, it'll, it'll, yeah, see, it'll say, nope, you've already got one in there called that, so I don't want to overwrite that, so I've got to um, call it something else. OC Warbler, that'll work. Okay, we'll wait for a minute as this exports. And we're done. So at this point I'm gonna minimize Lightroom. I'm gonna go into my Untitled Exports folder here. And here's my Warbler. I'm just going to double click this because it's already a Photoshop document. So it's going to open it up in Photoshop. And here's my bird. So the first thing I do when I open up in Photoshop is I go to Filter here. And I've downloaded a number of different plugins for Photoshop from Topaz Labs. And the two that I use the most often is Denoise and Adjust. Now Denoise is a really nice tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my photo in Denoise. And I'm just gonna get rid of all the grain. And you can see that it already, when I open it up, it's already on a setting. So when I'm moving this around, you can see the original. And then when it snaps back, you can see what it's doing. And it takes out a lot of the grain. You can see in the eye here, I've got some eye detail there. And so I usually have this on the preset strong. And you can do adjustments. You can do adjustments to overall strength and get even more precise with it. You can go into detail recovery and uh, really spend a lot of time. I have found that just clicking on strong usually does a good job. It's good light. When my ISO was low enough and uh, that strong preset is usually good enough to kind of get rid of most of the noise. So I'm just going to hit OK. This is going to process for a minute and it takes a few minutes to process. <clears throat> really love seeing the detail here. All of those little teeny feathers and around the eye. And these are the things I really want to bring out. This is the part that usually takes the longest, but the results are really nice. Okay, almost finished here. There we go. All right. So now we are all ready to edit the bird itself. So I'm going to go up here to uh, my quick selection tool. There you can see it. I'm going to click on that. And it's already at a good size. It's set 54 pixels. And I'm just going to go in here and start selecting the bird. I actually want to select this branch as well because I, I like the detail in it as a perch. And that's what I'll do a lot of times when I have a detailed perch, something like moss or lichen or something interesting like that. I'll, I'll go in and select that too because I want the details to come out of that. I, I 
think all of that is interesting and creates dynamic looking photos. This direct selection tool is really super nice. It really does a good job of selecting and getting what you want in here. And you can see the tail was slightly out of focus. And I kind of like that. I like the softness of it. But when I when I go into selecting, I need to fine tune this selection a little bit because I kind of want to hide the effects that I'm using. You know, I don't want any hard lines. I don't want uh, any hard edges to the selection. I want everything to be soft and natural looking. So I'm going to hit the Q, which is going to put me in quick mask mode. And so here you can see that everything is red has not been selected. So what I want to do is give this a really nice feather so that when I apply my adjustment layers, that that will um, kind of just be a really super nice fade. So here you can see I'm at 220, and this is it's a it's a blurred uh, selection tool. It doesn't have the hard edge like this uh, this circle does. It's just got a really nice nice blur. So I'm just going to go here and paint around this a little bit just to soften those edges. Something like that. Now if I wanted to, I could go in here. And if I need to make micro adjustments to my selection, like you can see here some of the bill has not been focused on or selected correctly. So I'm going to go in here to my polygon lasso tool. And when I hold down option, now I'm on a Mac, so it might be different if you're on a PC, but on my Mac I'm holding down option. And so I'm going to get rid of this little green here. So I've, I pushed Option, and then I clicked. And I'm just going to start selecting the edge of this of this bill there. And I come back around. You can see the circle there that closes my selection. And there we go. So in addition, I also need to select the rest of the bill. So to do that, I click Shift. You can see the little plus sign there. I'm going to start right here. And these are just really minute. And I'm going to return back to my starting point. And that's why I started over here, so I, I could see clearly where my starting point was. Sometimes I've had a hard time finding my starting point again. But here you can see it's closed the loop. I click there and I have a nice selection. And I'm not too worried about selecting every little feather here. I've already done my smoothing, my denoise, and uh, these little details are still there and they're going to remain there. What I'm going to do next, uh, once my selection is made, once I'm happy with my selection, um, I'm going to soften the edges even of my selection in general. So if there's a few places here, like I want to get some of these, some of these feathers here. So I'm just going to kind of go in and look around for any areas I may have missed. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to I'm going to contract some of this selection, but I just want to make sure it's nice and even. And I would say that looks pretty good. And I'm not worried about this too. There's not a lot of detail there. So I've got my birds selected and I've got my branch selected. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to modify my selection. So I'm going to go up here to modify. And I'm going to contract this. And I'm going to contract this by five pixels. And when I do that, you can see that it's brought it in just a little bit. So I'm going to go back in and modify, and then I'm going to do a feather. And I'm going to feather this by 5 pixels. And so what that does is give me a nice soft edge instead of a hard, abrupt edge. So that way, when I go in and I do my adjustment and my sharpening, I don't get any hard, abrupt lines from sharp to unsharp. It's a nice, soft transition. 
looks more natural. So I'm happy with this selection. So from this point, I'm going to go back to Topaz Labs. I'm going to go back to, uh, to I'm going to click on Topaz Adjust. I'm going to open up my screen. And Topaz is really nice. It gives me, oops, sorry. It gives me a lot of selections here. You can see a ton of presets that it has. And you can just go crazy going down here and seeing all the stuff that they have uh, built in already. Two that I use the most often is this Mild Details or Photo Pop. When it's small birds that I already have a lot of detail in, I'm just going to go with Photo Pop because it adds a little bit of color and adds some of the detail back in that I may have lost when I did the denoise. So um, I'll click on Photo Pop and then I'll come over here and I can adjust anything. So it's not a, it, this is just a place to start with. And if you like the results of just the preset, you can just click OK. But if, you, if not, if you want to increase detail, you can go here and increase this to Detail Boost. And, I'll do that real quick so just so you can see it increases the details and this screen doesn't look it, it's it, the preview screen is not how your photo actually will look it, it does look better than that but this is way too many details for this so I'm gonna go back to what it was I think it was around one or anyway, that's close enough all I really want to do is recover some of the details that I already had in there <clears throat> So that's probably it. I probably just there we go. It's back to back to one. So I like I, I I like that. I like that preset, and I use it a lot for my birds, unless I need to do some dra more drastic recovery with the details. So I'm gonna hit OK, and boom. There you can see. I'll do a I'll just do a quick recap so you can see the difference. There's without feather, there's with feather. As you can see it just popped in a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast to, to bring out the details. And I really like that. I really like uh, how it came out. So at this point, I'm going to, so I've got the birds selected, but now I wanna, I wanna deal with this background. So uh, I'm gonna inverse my selection. And you remember when I went and replaced that branch, I kind of ended up with this weird, weird thing right here. You know, you can tell that something was replaced. So I need to fix that. I'm actually going to just, I'm going to do a command D, which gets rid of my selection. And then I'm going to go into my smudge tool. And I'm going to bring that up by quite a bit. There we go. So this smudge tool kind of is able to move things around. And so I just kind of want to get rid of some of these hard edges. And so this is a, a large file, so it's going to take just a, a few minutes every time I do this, which can be a little tedious, but I think the end results are, are worth it. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Okay, you can see it, it, it had an effect. So you can kind of do this with, with all of that. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a few minutes. So I think we'll just do a few of those just to break up that line. We'll just wait for that to complete. It's going to take it a minute or two. And while I'm waiting, I can just be looking over, making sure I didn't miss anything on the bird, making sure I like what's happened so far. 
of the composition. It's not take much longer. Now, not every photo that I do has distractions that need to be removed. Uh, there's there's times when I like leaves to be in there that give the photo context and uh, make a scene, you know, part of the scene. But there's other times when, you know, if you've got a bird on a branch and you really just want that bird to be solo, that uh, removing stuff can really just, just bring all the attention right to your bird. And I think it produces a really nice photo. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. My computer's really thinking about it. So if you are interested in the Topaz Labs plugins, uh, just Google Topaz Labs and it should bring up the right website. And uh, you can go to the plugins. They also have a new release called Topaz Studio that is uh, really similar to Lightroom in that it's a photo editor. And uh, I haven't tried it, but it's in beta mode right now, and it looks really promising. And based on their other products, I am really interested in using it. Um, I really like how Photoshop and Lightroom interacts with each other, and that I can go right from Lightroom to Photoshop. But uh, I think that Topaz Labs because of the quality of their product, I think they would have a really good chance at, at being a competitor to Lightroom. So if you are not a Lightroom editor, uh, user, excuse me, then um, I would recommend giving Topaz Studio a try. And uh, I'm sure that their plugins all work really nicely. Okay, that took a really long time, but you can see it broke up that, that uh, hard lines. I'm going to break it up even more, uh, but I'm not going to use my smudge tool. That just took way too long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Q, which is going to put me in quick mask mode. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just, you know, that's too big. So I'm going to just paint do some area that I want to that I want to blur. So something like that. Now you can see it's selected everything I didn't paint red. So what I need to do here is go select, go to inverse. That looks good. That's what I want. So I'm going to go up here to filter. I'm going to go to blur. I'm going to go to Gaussian blur. And this is really going to take care of that really nicely. You can see that uh, at 103 pixels, that's really going pretty far. I don't think I need quite that many. Probably 70 is pretty good. I can deselect that and you see that I've pretty much essentially gotten rid of that 
hard line and really gave it a nice soft background. So I'm really pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, going over it again, I, I don't see any areas where I would change. I like the color of the background. The bird is nice and bright. So at this point, I go in and I grab here from my libraries panel, I grab my signature, and I'm just going to drop my signature. And this is kind of my, my finishing touch here. I'm going to say, yes, I want to place that. But I, I don't want to have it just this gray. So I'm going to go up here to my layers and uh, change this from normal to color dodge. And I'm going to go and move it right about there and drop the opacity down. I don't want it to be quite as bright. I don't want to compete with my bird. But I also don't want people to not know who did it. So I want to place it right there. Let me just move it a little bit. So there we go. This is a finished product. I like how this turned out. Orange crowned warbler on a branch. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will uh, endeavor to make more videos as time goes on and do more edits. And uh, there's a lot more to, to do. There's sky replacements. There's uh, even even uh, replacing heads and other things that uh, that you can do. So sometimes there's two images that one thing a head looks good on one place and the body looks good on the other, and you got to do some merging. So all those things are possible, and you can do them to where no one notices that they were two photos that have become one. And uh, I can walk you through those. So we'll look forward to doing something like that in a future video. But for now. This is Jamin Taylor with J Hunter Photography signing off. Thank you so much for viewing. Bye-bye.